All right. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Healthy Holidays. Navigate the season like a boss with no regrets. I always do it this way. Well, since I really learned these great strategies and it's really changed my life. And I'm so excited to share these strategies with you guys and with everybody who's going to be watching this recording after. Um, but before we get started, I'm Agatha, director at Fueled. Fueled stands for Food Unleashing Energy for Life. So that's Fuel, Food Unleashing Energy for Life. Instead of food unleashing chronic disease or food unleashing fatigue, headaches, low mood, or other low, awful health outcomes. So that's what Fueled is all about, unleashing energy for life. Um, and I'm also an author. I'm a high-performance nutrition coach and a health coach. Um, I'm a private health food chef, chef, private, yeah, healthy food chef, um, and a member of the Nutritional Therapist Association of Bermuda. Um, my passion is really to help people claim the most legendary, lit up and limitless version of themselves through fueling their body with nutrient dense foods and drinks and next level health habits. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, uh, which will be next level health habits. That's the general category. And it is about healthy holidays. Again, navigating the season like a boss with no regrets. So I've got strategies to help you feel more energized, less exhausted, um, not like you're derailing your um, healthy eating progress or your healthy eating goals or results, or do you not derailing any of it? So you're going to be finishing the year strong, finishing it happy, um, healthy, you know, with the same waistline as you started <laughs> in December. Um, and that's the idea of these strategies and these tips and this advice. And some of it's going to be funny and some of it's going to be, you know, actually silly, but smart. Some of it's going to be more deep. You're going to get some of that deeper content here too. And so, um, yeah. And some of it's just going to be just like an aha moment, you know? So think about your questions throughout. If you have any questions for me at the end, I will like help you overcome the challenge. Let's tackle some of the stuff here. I do have some questions that were sent into me by some people who are unable to attend live. So I'm looking forward to sharing those questions and we'll leave the questions to the end. So anything that happens in your mind, just write it down so that we can um, tackle that stuff at the very end. Really excited about this. So as it's just the end of November right now, we have, I feel like we are going to be very prepared for the holiday season rather than trying to, you know, pre prepared and proactive is better than trying to sort of figure it out as you are going along, sort of knowing in advance what strategies you can use, you know, and what kind of approaches you can take and how you're going to do this or that differently this year, you know, so that you can really feel so good at the end. Um, it's better than sort of being thrown into a situation, screwing it up, kind of trying to figure it out as you go through. And coming out of it going, oh, next year, I'm going to do this, this, and that. See, that's kind of what I'm bringing this for because I have messed up. <laughs> and I've also had those times where you finish the holiday with regrets. And I mean, that's when people show up to see me the most. They come to see a nutrition coach. They come to get healthy. They come to detox um, at the end because it's just such a time of, of like indulgence and a time of temptation and a time when people say I fell off the wagon or whatnot right so it doesn't have to be that way and it can be enjoyable so I'm going to bring in because you know you guys who know me know how important pleasure is for me and that we bring food and pleasure together while we're getting healthy so that's what I'm going to be bringing to you guys. So it's not about deprivation. It's not about starvation. It's not about not, it's not about having, yeah, deprivation or scarcity mindset. It's going to be about abundance, but let's navigate it like a total boss um, and finish the new year, finish this year strong and start 2023 strong. Um, okay. So let me see what I have here. We've got, we've got one hour together. Please leave your questions to the end. Just I did say that, but I'm just making sure. <laughs> so let's dive right in. Um, I've got eight points that we are going to talk about. So you can take notes if you'd like. Um, you can also just, I'm going to send this recording out to you afterwards as well. But let me just get to point number one. All right. 
this is a lot of people and it's kind of a big one. So I decided to put it first. I'm just going to read my note about it and then I'll speak to the note. Eat a fueled, tip one for navigating the season like a boss. Eat a fueled, nutrient loaded breakfast and lunch and do not arrive hungry to the party. Okay. Fasting before we head out to a feast, skipping meals, and trying to save calories for a later time wreaks havoc on our metabolism, on our blood sugar levels, and waistline. It's a commonly used strategy, is definitely not recommended by me, uh, often leads to overindulging on unhealthy foods that compromise our optimal health and body composition goals late in the day when very little time is left to effectively utilize all the energies these foods provide um, before we go to sleep. So before I read the rest of that um, note that I have for myself, I'll speak to it a little bit. What this is saying is, and I know people who do this, especially women, it's actually saying load up at breakfast and lunch on your regular meal that is nutrient loaded, that gives you your vitamins, your minerals, your fiber, your healthy fats, that gives you, you know, the omega threes, it gives you all that goodness so that you're not arriving because most parties are, there are some holiday brunches and I love and appreciate those, but a lot of parties and cocktail events and work events are at the very end of the day, right? So a lot of people I hear, and my mother is one of these people, <laughs> Um, and I know two other women very closely who do this, they say, oh, I'm just not going to have anything. You know, I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to save my calories to the very end of the day. And they think that because I'm going to save my calories and I can have all those calories at the very end of the day. And they think because I'm just not going, I'm just going to like fast or whatever all through the day. And then when I get there, I'm going to have something to eat when I finally get to the party because it's going to be so indulgent. There's going to be all these holiday indulgence foods, right? So it is a commonly used strategy, especially for women. Um, and here's what happens. You not only arrive with no calories in your system, you also arrive depleted of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, fiber, you don't have the vitamins that your body needs. So you've actually been operating on like a low power mode. Okay. Um, you don't have the iron, the B vitamins, all of those vitamins that provide energy and provide immunity and provide a great presence and give you the ability to really shine when you arrive somewhere. You don't have those vitamins in your body. So you're arriving um <laughs> hungry <laughs> so i talked about that in just a moment but you're depleted you're deficient in vitamins you're depleted you're deficient in vitamins and you're deprived of the essential nutrients that you need to show up and like bring it and to be festive and to feel the great holiday spirit because i'll tell you what happens to these people when they arrive They've like not eaten all day. They've been at work. They've not eaten all day. They're like, I'm really going to wait till the end. And I'm going to have all my calories when I get there. Cause it's going to be so indulgent. First of all, they get there. There is like that, you know, when you're below the I'm past hungry point, you show up, you show up to, you know, these people, they're like, where's the food? Why are we not eating yet? Like when is food coming out? <laughs> and all they can focus on is when is the food coming out? You don't have control over the food coming out when it's not a party that you're hosting. So it may come out in an hour. They may serve cocktails first, a few appetizers, which you're going to be binge eating once you arrive quite hungry, right? And those are not usually the healthiest, right? Like they haven't started serving the healthy food yet for a dinner or something like that. They're just serving appies and cocktails. So you're showing up depleted, deprived, nutrient deficient probably on hangry mode um, or spaced out because no one at that point is actually like feeling their best. They're not feeling like cut full and overflowing in terms of how well they feel. It's always like, oh, they're going to serve the food. Would you mind getting me something like that? So it doesn't look like I'm holding too much. Um, you know, it's just this focus on not being social and taking in the whole event. It's this focus on like, When's the food coming out? Um, they get hangry, they get spaced out. Um, they're, they're not, they're quite antisocial. 
Um, you know, so sometimes if you think about what actually happens, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Please eat prior to arriving to the party, um, proper breakfast, like a green smoothie with all these nutrients, like from bananas and from spinach and from grapefruit and from other good things that you put in there and chia seeds and flax seeds and, you know, and then a lunch that's really balanced that has a lot of good healthy fat, has a lot of good fiber in it. So fiber is from vegetables. So just like you had some vegetables in there. So maybe like a big stew with a lot of vegetables in it, or like chopped vegetables that are stir fried into something delicious. Um, you know, healthy fats would be like a piece of salmon or healthy oils, olive oil, um, different types of, of fats like that. Or, and also, so um, healthy fats, fiber, and protein. So protein comes from nuts, seeds, beans, meat, fish. So that protein keeps you fuller longer and you are able to show up at the party from like the most optimized place. Um, instead of being on low power mode. So again, when you starve yourself through the entire day or fast before you feast, um, you are looking at like when you have a cell phone and your cell phone is in low battery mode because that's generally what's happened. So what does a cell phone end up doing? It turns off background apps. It turns off apps lowers the brightness of your cell phone, right? So your cell phone starts to dim, 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 dim. You can't do certain functions anymore. That's what happens to your cell phone on low power mode. And literally what happens to us on low power mode, which is when we're fasting before we feast. We're not our brightest self. Like we're not all that we can be coming into this event. Um, and that's something really to think about. If that's a strategy that you use or that you know someone commonly uses, maybe share with them. You know, you're actually depleted. You're actually nutrient deprived. Um, you're deficient in nutrients at the moment, right? So that's something you might want to think about. It's like, I actually need all those nutrients to be in my body. Um, so even if the party's just about to start and you're kind of okay, but you're not that great and you're not sure if they're going to be serving food in the first two hours even, have a healthy snack before you go. Hummus or um, vegetables or some roast lamb, something. Have something before you go so that you're not depleted, deficient, you know, not shining bright when you get into the party. Um, that's a really important one. And another thing is that, um, or, or just grab some nuts, some walnuts, some almonds, um, some cashews. Um, yeah, because then you're going to really feel a lot better. Your blood sugar will be better. Your metabolism will be more normal. You won't be trying to like, your body won't be trying to store things really, you know, desperately because it's been starved all day. So really keeping those regular meal times so important. And I know it can sound like, oh my God, what are you talking about? Like eat before you go to the dinner party. Are you serious? It's really, it's a winner's strategy. It's a winner's strategy. If you give it a try, you've got a month to try it. Uh, give it a try. It's a winner strategy and see how you feel when you arrive to the party. Um, and at the end of the month, if you have the regrets that you normally had, um, essentially, right? So, and so yeah, and normally, again, these, these parties, the food is at the end of the day, right before you go to sleep. So what that tends to happen to us then is um, that's our lowest metabolic phase. So you fuel up on all these foods, but you're not burning them at all. You go to sleep on it and then your body starts to store. It's not the best place to be. So if you eat earlier on, you get there and I'll tell you about navigating the party from that great healthy state next. Um, but first of all, a fun one. So number two is hold your drink in your dominant hand, all right? If you're worried about snacking on all those, you know, cause they bring out the healthy, the, <laughs> the healthy and the not so healthy. When you get to a party, they bring out all the abbeys, right? So they bring out all the things with like the cheese and the like whipped cream and then like the, the mousses of sorts, like the salmon mousse and all the different kinds of things, the little thing on croissant and little fried goods, maybe even French fries with a special kind of dip and like different kinds of things. So they're bringing all this out. It's not the most healthy. And you're welcome to have them, but it's not the kind of thing that you want to really have it a lot of, right? Because those kind of foods, they don't really deliver the nutrients and they're kind of calorie loaded and not really that nutritious. So not all of them, but some of them. 
So um, let me turn the page here. Here's something that I use. I hold my drink in my dominant hand. So when you arrive, you'll often be greeted. This, you won't be getting a cup. <laughs> you probably get like a wine glass or something. Um, or if you have a water glass, or if you have a mocktail glass, whatever it is that you're drinking sparkling water, maybe you did receive like a hot cup of cocoa or um, hot um, apple cider or, you know, warm tea or something. If you hold it in your dominant hand, then when all those appies come around, you try to work with your less dominant hand. If you're anything like me, it's not easy. It's really not easy. So you end up... <laughs> fumbling around, trying to work things out with your less dominant hand and making a big mess of things. And it's just a bit too hard. So if you hold the drink in your dominant hand, you won't be as snackish as peckish. You will leave things alone. Um, if drinking and guzzling down drinks is the problem, hold your drink in your left dominant hand so that you are, it's not, it, I mean, it's not a horrible, we're not, you know, terrible at it, but it is harder. So that's kind of a fun one. Think about, you know, everything's easier with your dominant hand. When you're being passed around appetizers, you're just snacking away. Oh, it's so delicious. Um, try that with your left hand. If your right hand is your dominant one, it's a lot harder, way harder. So give that a try. Um, and another note that's similar to that is just don't stand next to the dessert. I always thought, why am I eating all of these brownies? When I was, you know, younger, before I figured all this out, I thought, why am I eating all these brownies? I had so many of those two bite brownies or whatever, all the little chocolate things. Um, don't stand near the dessert table. Literally, like, navigate your way to the opposite side of the room. Because if you're standing there and just chatting with somebody, you might mindlessly start to just snack on things, literally because you're right next to it. And it just seems like one of those things is kind of casual. You can't even remember at the end of the conversation how many of those little mini cheesecakes that you had. It's just a great tip to move yourself along to somewhere where there's like an art display or a view outside um, or something other than a food table while you're actually in a conversation with somebody. All right, the next one that I have for you guys, number three, um, if you absolutely have to have it, savor it slowly for two whole bites and then leave the rest. So this I actually really um, share a lot in coaching and that is that um, we get most pleasure from food in the first two bites. It's like if you have a nice cheesecake and you cut into it and you take it to your mouth and there's the moisture, there's the texture, there's the tart, there's the sweet, there's all those different things that are going on with that cheesecake. And it's nice. And it, you really like that first bite is incredible. The second bite is really quite good. The third bite is all right. Then it's like our pleasure goes down. It just goes down as the more that we have of a food, it sort of saturates our mouth and that pleasure, that initial pleasure isn't there anymore. So why don't you just try, um, take the bite and enjoy everything that you can of that flavor on your taste buds, right? So, because you know, at Christmas time, there are foods that come out that are only once a year, right? You think in your mind right now, you know, just think about that one thing that comes out just this time of year that you really love. So for me, it's gingerbread houses and gingerbread men. It's really not an Easter thing, really not a birthday thing, it's really not like a Bermuda Day thing. It's not a first of July or fourth of July thing. It's Christmas is those gingerbread cookies. And I have super healthy recipes for them now. So <laughs> I have healthy <laughs> gingerbread cookies. You can still overindulge on healthy gingerbread cookies and a gingerbread house, right? So um, that's it for me. So whatever it is for you, some people like those chocolate Yule logs. Some people like eggnog cheesecake. Some people love eggnog and like that going gone too far can be, can be really damaging to our waistline um, and to our nutrition. Um, so whatever that is for you, there's so many delicious and incredible and special and festive and wonderful foods that come out this time of year. Whatever it is for you, you shouldn't not have it. You know, you heard it here first. <laughs> Agatha said, two thumbs up, go ahead. 
And what I'm just saying is have it, savor it for two or three bites and then put it down and either share it with somebody else. You know, if there's somebody you think, oh, you know, like I'd like to share this dessert with you or your partner or some children, you know, like your, your child, if you ate, would you like the other half of the gingerbread man? <laughs> I ate the legs and the arms. Would you like the body and the head? Because <laughs> I'm done, <laughs> you know, so I literally just did that on Friday. Um, so I, you know, I think that that's a really great strategy and a great approach because then at the end of the season, you think, I love gingerbread, had gingerbread. I love eggnog cheesecake, had a bit of eggnog cheesecake. I love, um, you know, insert your favorite thing here. And I had it, you know, so you don't end the season with like, oh, this sort of like this desperation, this scarcity, like I didn't have anything that I enjoy. Um, I also make my carrot cake again this time of year. It's my every every event cake. So I always have some of my carrot cake too. Um, you know, so it's, I hate that feeling when you look back and you think, oh, it just smelled so good. And I wish I could have, but I didn't, or I couldn't have, or, you know, I shouldn't, or it's bad for me. And, you know, it may not be the most nutritious, but if it's what you love, you should have a bit of that. And it should be where you really enjoy it. But I mean, be mindful, like no watching TV or listening to a voice note or sending something on Instagram, like put everything away and savor it slowly and enjoy every moment of it so that you really know at the end of the season, I didn't gain a pound, but I enjoyed gingerbread. I enjoyed the eggnog cheesecake. I enjoyed the Yule log. I enjoyed cassava pie. I enjoyed whatever it is for you, right? So it's a really nice feeling at the end. Uh, you know, I had the eggnog and rum and, you know, and it's just a matter of being mindful and less is more when you're paying attention to it and just knowing that it's a special treat that's this time of the year and you really get to savor it slowly. So it's even written like that in a book that I've read by Marie Giuliano, <laughs> where she speaks about French women and their ability to just eat croissant and not put on any weight. Um, and it's all about pleasure and enjoying yourself, but understanding that there is a sort of a, a down, it, it's less and less pleasurable the, the more you have of something. Those first bites are the most wow, right? So let them be wow and then stop and share, stop and discard, stop and freeze for another time, <laughs> you know? So that's, that's the next one. Um, Yeah, so that so right. So we all know, just to add to that, we all know that these items may not show up on your plate, on our plate for another 12 months, but imagine how much less of an impact holiday feasts will have on your waistline come January 1st if you utilize this particular success hack. And all the while you can say that you truly enjoyed the incredible flavors that the holiday season has to offer. All right, the next one is stay hydrated, drink plenty of water. So boring, I know everyone <laughs> got to expect someone in the nutrition space to talk about hydration, right? So um, we will eat less, keep our digestive tract primed and regular, feel much more energized when we remember to stay hydrated by drinking plenty of water during the holiday season. This will put us in the best state and prevent us from feeling drained and depleted so that we make better decisions at the holiday dinner table. Much of the time we're actually dehydrated and not really hungry. So that's pretty much that point is hydration helps you to not be depleted, to not be dehydrated. It allows you to show up again in your best state. And just like point number one, when you have those nutrients, that hydration, um, all of that in your system, when you arrive to the holiday feast, you're at an advantage from pretty much everybody else. People are dehydrated, they're exhausted, they didn't sleep well, they ate too much last night at the other feast. So you're coming at a way better place. And from that better place, you are able to make better decisions. So like how, how many times have you experienced that if you exercise in the morning, you make a better decision for breakfast and a better decision for lunch. You feel better throughout the day. You don't have a snack accident in the evening when you get home from work. And it all started because you started the day right. You exercised first thing and felt really good. 
if you are hydrated throughout the day, you arrive to the party, not depleted, you feel better, you have a sense of yourself and that you're at a better state than other people and then you would be. So you're showing up just so much better and you're less likely to make decisions that stem from desperation and depletion and deficiencies. And okay, if you want to ask about how much water, um, that actually is something I should mention too. How much water is, um, is a great question. I mean, you can go put yourself on a gallon challenge. I love my gallon challenge. Um, that means four liters of water a day. It might be too much for some people, um, but that's, you're gonna be guaranteed to be hydrated on a gallon challenge, four liters a day again. You can get like four mason jars, fill them up, and then make sure you finish them by the end of the day, preferably earlier in the day so that you're not up the bathroom a hundred times at night. Um, and what's really important if you don't want to just have like an external indicator is to just know that we have a bio indicator. Like our urine color tells us we're hydrated, we're dehydrated. If your urine color has any color to it. If it's anything but clear, like if it's yellow or if it's deep orange, you're dehydrated. So that urine color needs to be clear, like totally clear, transparent to be indicating to you that you are fully hydrated, good job, you know? So you can check on urine color. Um, if you are hydrating, you will be noticing it because you will be going to the bathroom. <laughs> um, but actually our bladder does adjust to that eventually and it does start to be, you know, not so annoying. Um, so look out for that. <laughs> so just remember, stay hydrated. And that's when you know you're hydrated, your urine is clear, but also try the gallon challenge. Um, Right, my next one for you guys is forget the food and focus on the people, the ambiance, the conversations, the memories, taking photos and your outfit instead. That might sound really bold and you might be sitting there with your arms crossed thinking, right, forget the food, <laughs> focus on people, ambiance, <laughs> conversations, memories, taking photos and your outfit instead. Um, so I'm going to read my note and I'm going to speak to it. So since we all ate healthily, since we ate healthily all day and are not showing up to the party in a hungry state of, de of desperation, we can shift our focus from the holiday food to all the other aspects of the holiday feast or party that can truly nourish us at an even deeper level, mind, body, and soul. So that's right. We're nourished by much more than food. We are nourished by much more than food. We are fueled by much more than food. The holidays are filled with warm hugs, beautiful people dressed in their best, happy holiday energy, and a cheerful and comforting glowy ambiance that really only happens once a year. Fill up on it. So that's a big part of when you show up fueled to a party because you are not depleted, you are not deprived, you're not desperate, not hangry, not spaced out, none of it. You're not the one who's like, when are they going to bring out the food? Are we eating yet? Right? We all know that person, right? Um, you get to show up and take in the ambiance. You know, this really happens once a year. It's totally not a birthday ambiance. It's not even a new year ambiance. New Year's is like silver and blue and cooler colors, right? I love New Year's. I love birthdays, but Christmas is like, it's like red velvet hats and white fur and gingerbread and spices and mulled wine and golden lights on trees and houses and it's just you know warm hugs and cards with glitter on them it's it's like a whole special warm stockings fireplace you know carols um church glow ambiance to it it's so special um it's only once a year and when you show up fueled you get to be the person who takes in all of that instead of the person who is like starving and waiting to eat only these foods. Also, when you show up totally fueled, it's not about the food anymore. It, that falls away. You may love all those foods, but there's a, a fullness and a satisfaction that you get from just being in these beautiful spaces with these beautiful people. Um, you know, even if you can't stand some of them like in-laws or, you know, um, whoever, you can always, it's, it's funny sometimes, you know, it's, 
it's 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 wacky sometimes it's weird sometimes some family members are a little weird right but it's still christmas and maybe it wouldn't be christmas without that wacky aunt right like or that crazy uncle who drinks too much and then falls asleep on the couch it's always christmas you know and there's something to it and you get to enjoy all of that you can compliment people you're just in a high other next level space because you're not depleted you're not deprived you're also not over full from yesterday's event right because this season is just like back to back to back to back um with events with business events with family events with extended family events with with all different kinds of things so you know even if you're a client, you go to client parties, if you're business, you hold business parties, there's all kinds of things that happen this time of year and you are coming at a better place because you are fueled. It's totally different. And you get to be that person who enjoys like the scented candles and all the things that are there, the conversations and the people and, and, and the, you know, a brooch somebody's wearing because you're in a better space to actually notice the details on the hostess or the host. Um, you know, to enjoy the children and the wonder in their eyes. And they're talking about what they asked for for Santa. Like it's a whole other type of season. And we don't have this season except for this month. So instead of letting it weigh you down with excesses and indulgences and temptations, you know, rise above it and show up fueled and be in a space where you're just like embracing the whole everything in the season you know you'll have a better experience you'd be surprised it's not scarcity or deprivation or feeling like you missed out it is actually having more it's about having more all right the next one check in with yourself okay so I'll, again i'll read my note here um and then i'll speak to it um, and this again speaks to alignment. So when we just spoke about those points where you show up fuel, you're also in alignment. You're not out of balance. You're not deprived, but in alignment. So this one is check in with yourself. If you feel out of alignment in any way at the beginning of December, now you guys, right? So Think about this right now. Where are you right now? Just really think through. You can close your eyes. You can visualize where you are as I speak this one through. If you feel out of alignment in any way at the beginning of December, do not push that aside. Are your finances stressing you out? Is your relationship on the rocks? Does your job make you want to jump ship? Walking into parties filled with the temptation to overeat or overdrink while having some key areas of your life out of balance and not in the best place is not a great idea. Do an honest self-assessment. Take inventory of every area of your life that is less than satisfying or not nourishing you right now. Being dissatisfied with a relationship, having an inappropriate exercise routine, too much, too little, the wrong type, being bored, feeling stressed out, having a messy house when you get home, being uninspired in a job or lacking a spiritual practice can all contribute to eating and drinking for reasons other than fueling your body. Eating and drinking can be used to fill the nourishment void, which is a maladaptive coping mechanism. So it's some therapy words there, maladaptive coping mechanism, where much healthier, entirely more fun and life expanding ways to tackle those gaps exist and can be sought out. So for optimal success, set up a few sessions with your therapist and or someone like myself, a health coach, um, a certified integrative nutrition health coach to help you tune into your body and your life prior to party season. So again, this just speaks to if something is totally off, let me find you guys here. If it's if something is totally off in your life and you're really stressed out about finances, relationships, um, maybe a child has gone off course, um, whatever it is, you are more tempted in a place of imbalance like that. You are more tempted to overeat and overdrink. So let's check in with ourselves. Is there anything that you're stressed out about? Is it finances? Is it relationships? You know, is it your home environment? Um, is it the death of a loved one? You know, 
whatever it is, Christmas can be a time where it really shows up and rears its, <laughs> rears its ugly head um, and pushes us to a space of overeating and over drinking or one or the other or both. So that's something to check in with yourself again, allow it to be something that you're going through and seek ways that you can work through it. They say the best way out is through. Okay. So you got to get into it, work through it. Right. So there are people who break up, have divorces during this time. There are people who it's, it's, they have huge family, you know, domestic violence happens at this time. Deaths happens at this time. All these things happen at this time. If that's something that's going on, um, or if your finances are really frightening at this time, you know, we had Christmases through COVID or people where there was massive job losses, and all these kind of things. I was coaching during those times. And I was so glad that people were seeing me because we got to work together to ensure the best health, you know, of to ensure your best health when you're going through this season, because there's so much temptation in every direction. So you can go off course and find yourself at the new year, you know, depressed, having put on 10, 12 pounds and, you know, severely hungover. So with a lot of regret and maybe no good memories to speak of, you know, again, I've been a coach for several years. This is a tough time. So check in with yourself now. This is one of the deeper ones, a little bit heavier, right? It's not, you know, the whole hold your cup in your right dominant hand so that you're not snacking with it. <laughs> um, it's a lot of a deep, it's a lot more of a deeper one and just something to really think through. Um, so again, that helps you when you have support, even just having that person to speak to sometimes through what you're going through and that listening ear, someone who's holding space for you is so important. And so please seek out these people before the season starts. Um, and that keeps you in alignment and not in a state of desperation, depletion, or any of that, right? So, okay. Um, and you'll arrive more present. You're not sort of stuck in this sort of place of like, oh, I'm going through a divorce right now, you know, so like I can't even socialize and be with my family, but you're actually dealing with that, you know, in another space and you have that stuff being handled. So you're able to be present with everybody. So it allows you to really take in the season and really enjoy it. So that's something to think about. Um, last one. Cravings are not the enemy. Tune into your body to see what it is telling you. Cravings are um, incredibly helpful in guiding you to ideal health like a smoke alarm. So if you have a snack accident, so yes, cravings are helpful. They guide you to ideal health just like a smoke alarm. When you have a craving, you can actually decode it. You can say, what am I hungry for? What am I actually craving? Do I need social connection? Do I need self-care, like to just say no to an event, be home, <laughs> turn the lights off and listen to soothing music um, or watch TV that just helps you to unwind and release. Do you need more self-care? Um, you know, decode it. It's a clue. When you have a snack accident or when you have cravings or when you want to like indulge so much and it's unbelievable how much you want to indulge, it's telling you something is out of balance. What is it? Find out what it is and lean into it. Um, get curious about it. So something is out of alignment. Get curious instead of get a crutch. A lot of people get crutches. They're like, oh, I'll just take these diet pills. Oh, I'll just get these injections. Oh, I'll just um, drink these diet teas or whatever to try and kill my appetite. So they look for a crutch instead of seeing it as a clue that's saying, hey, hey, Agatha, um, you know, your missing family right now because you've not seen them in three years you know and as annoying as they are <laughs> you love those people and you really need to be with them so do whatever it takes and figure that piece out if not this year for next year so that this doesn't happen again right so that you don't crave too much you're not over drinking the wine you're not over drinking the, the eggnog you're not overeating the cassava pie you're not overeating chocolates you're not overeating cheesecake, whatever it is, gingerbread houses, all right, I'm guilty. <laughs> um, and so cravings are not the enemy. They're a clue. Don't look for crutches. If you can lean into it, find out what it is, give yourself solutions this year. Um, and instead of a pill or something like that, lean into it, find solutions, real solutions, true solutions. Um, all right. So that wraps it up. We covered several tips 
And I have some more specific questions. And I am going to probably stop the recording and not record questions so that we can actually speak as freely as we'd like to and not have to worry about anything being recorded. Um, and so just, just for that added privacy. Oh, wait, I'm going to include this one because this person is going to, um, there's two people who asked questions and they wanted to watch the answers in the replay. So let's do that. <laughs> just while, while uh, I thought about that. So, but that brings us to the end of the formal presentation. And I hope that you guys enjoyed these tips. I've really enjoyed presenting them to you. Everybody will be receiving the replay and I hope that they really enjoy it. So you can listen again. If anything was one of those, you had an aha moment and you want to go back and review that section and just really listen to it again. Sometimes the second time we hear something, it really hits home and really feels good. So I'm gonna first dive in now to the Q and A. Um, well, actually, let me do just a little sign off, uh, a formal sign off for the recording, and then I'll dive into this Q&A. While I'm doing this, you can think about if there's any questions that you have. And anybody who's watching the recording, I will respond to, ans uh, to your questions. So if you have any questions, an incredible opportunity for you to reach out and ask me after the recording. Let's say I'll give you guys 14 days, um, up to like December 15th or something like that, to ask questions that you have about challenges. So maybe even the first two weeks, you actually experience some challenges and you want to reach out and say, hey, Agatha, you know, hey coach, can you tell me what you would do in this situation? Whatever it is, don't be shy, you guys. I have navigated this for so many years and these are the culmination of some great strategies that I have done over the culmination of all these years that I've been thinking this through and how to really like, you know, navigate the season like a boss with no regrets. <laughs> so I'll do a little sign off here. So thank you for watching. This has been Agatha from Fuels on the topic of healthy holidays. Navigate the season like a boss with no regrets. Um, be sure to check out. I have a special right now until just about Christmas time. It's an autumn sale. So it's till the very end of autumn. Um, and the start of winter is when it ends. So right before Christmas um, on one on one health coaching and nutrition coaching with me. There's a special for $999 for your starter package. And that gets you several sessions for $999. If you're in Bermuda, that's, and this is one-on-one -on -one private coaching where we work on your goals and everything that you want to achieve and really get you to where you want to be in that next level you. It's me and you speaking Sessions are really nice and long. They're an hour and 15 minutes. I don't cut you guys down to 30 minutes, whatever, you know, other people are doing very short sessions. I really want to sit in it and speak to you, learn about what your challenge is and get in there. So get you strategies, get you results, get you what you want, you know, work together to do that. So this package is on sale right now. If you're in Bermuda, then this sort of kickstart fueled autumn sale package is, uh, it's eligible for if you have BFNM or CG insurance, you get a benefit back from your insurer for hundreds of dollars on that. So the amount out of pocket is actually a lot less than $9.99. Um, again, you get several sessions for that. So be sure to ask me about that. Just shoot me an email or a WhatsApp or a DM on Instagram or Facebook, a message on LinkedIn, whatever it is that you want to do reach out to me for that great deal. Again, it's not available in the new year, you guys. You can use these sessions for 12 months. So you can use the sessions for 12 months. And uh, so that includes the new year, which means that if you want to start after the holiday, we can do that. You can have these sessions for 12 months. Just a better deal than uh, right at new year if you want to start them. And also, um, I've got some great programs, and they're called the Energized Executive 16-Week Total Nutrition Reset and Radiant Health Goddess, which is exclusively for women. And again, that's a total nutrition reset for women. It's 10 weeks. Okay. Um, remember, as we wrap up here, get fueled today for a healthier and happier tomorrow. Happy holidays. All the best. Happy, healthy holidays. Let's dive into this question. All right. So I will record this question and then I will stop the recording. I have to get into my phone. We are almost at the hour mark as we started late. Where's my question?
you open your phone, you have a lot of messages all of a sudden. First question, <clears throat> did you eliminate sugar completely? Can I use organic maple syrup? My parents use Splenda. I tell them I don't think that's good because it's artificial. I also bought coconut sugar. Are there any options you can recommend? So this is just asking a very specific question about sugar and sweets, basically, right? So it's when you're thinking about healthy holidays. So the answer to the question, did you eliminate sugar completely? That's to me, yes, I don't eat any sugar whatsoever. And I mean processed sugar, white sugar, brown sugar, organic white sugar, organic cane sugar, anything that says sugar, I don't eat it. I quit sugar 12 years ago. Don't miss it one bit. Um, I have sweets in the form of dried fruit, fruit, honey, and maple syrup. Honey and maple syrup also were quite sweet, but for me, they just feel better in my body. They don't contribute to like a toxic load. I don't feel wired and then crash. Um, I feel healthy, well, and balanced. If I include like to sweeten my gingerbread cookies, I use, I make them out of almond flour, which is a nice protein, and I use um, maple syrup. So that's a really nice way. My carrot cake is sweetened with maple syrup and then honey in the frosting. Um, you know, so yeah, I don't eat sugar. I completely eliminated sugar, but I have these other sweet options that I do. Uh, sugar is quite toxic to the body. So that's not something that I, that I really wanted. Um, can I use organic maple syrup? Yes. Um, I bought coconut sugar too. Great. <laughs> So my parents use Splenda. I tell them I don't think it's good because it's artificial. Correct. So check out my Instagram. I just did um, a reel, like a video that talks about commonly approved, like FDA approved foods, uh, ingredients that are destroying your body. So foods that are destroying your body include Splenda, aspartame, uh, food dyes. So let's talk about Splenda. Splenda is comes from sugar, like it has like a sugar molecule, but it has chlorine attached to it, okay? So it literally is chlorine in it, like from a swimming pool. So that's what you're eating. It's very toxic. It's Splenda is a chemical cocktail um, and it's very bad for the body. It has been linked to a whole bunch of issues with the kidneys, uh, pancreas, um, brain. It has also uh, potentially carcinogenic which means cancer causing, which means it basically causes your cells to grow abnormally, abnormal cell growth, that's cancer, that's what Splenda is linked to. So don't go for the diet, Splenda, aspartame, diet, anything is really going to destroy your health in the long term and contribute to your toxic load. Sounds awful, it is awful. Um, so, if you would like to sweeten something up like cookies, then yeah, I would go for, I would go for maple syrup or honey or date sugar. Then next category, like less, a little bit better, but coconut sugar. Um, oh, and uh, stevia and agave in those sections. Okay. So Okay, stevia could also be potentially in the top one, although I'll be honest, some people that I know, including myself, have a kind of allergic reaction to stevia. So um, stevia is a sweetener, like it's a green leaf from, the, from South America, and it has zero calories, but it has a sweet flavor. So it's actually healthy because it's an actual sweet leaf, like a green leaf. Um, so those are, those are the options I would recommend for baking, for sweetening up your if you make homemade eggnog for sweetening up hot chocolate, if you make it from like raw cacao and then you add like honey or maple syrup, if you want just like a hot steamed milk um, or a turmeric latte, I always add honey. Um, you know, so yeah, so in terms of sugar, I would eliminate sugar altogether, but you guys don't have to. It can just be part of like that, that percentage of deliciousness that you enjoy that's like 20% or 10% of your holiday. And you get to say at the end of the holiday, I really enjoyed it. And you know what? Of all the foods that I tasted, I only ate so much of them. And the rest I either shared or I did something else with. And I didn't, you know, gain any weight. I didn't feel gross. I didn't have brain fog. I didn't feel like I needed a detox and felt so bad. You know, I felt really good. So, um, so yeah, so 
you could have some sugar, you know, you can choose to eliminate it. I teach a course on how to eliminate sugar if you want to talk to me about that. So maple syrup, yes. So I'd say maple syrup, organic raw honey, or stevia, category one, then coconut sugar, and agave in category two. Second question I had. What are the scientific terms I should watch out for and those dyes in candies? I always can't seem to remember. Okay, so this is obviously when you're, so dyes and candies, they sound like this, yellow number five, yellow number six, red number five, blue number seven. Um, they have a number, they, it says yellow. If your ingredients on the side of whatever you're buying has a number, has yellow on it, you probably know that's, that's artificial. It's really not a good idea for your body. It'll contribute to your toxic load. So if you're having it once in the month, twice in the month, or three times in the month, don't sweat it. But if it's something that you're having on a daily basis, so let's say that you're um, doing sugar cookies with some children and you decide to do like dyed sugar cookies, you probably don't want to have those every single day or get organic naturally sourced food coloring, like from beets, they can make red food coloring from turmeric, they can make yellow and orange food coloring. So just look into that. The scientific names, um, check out the reel I did on Instagram that talks about like aspartame, Splenda. There's like all these things that are destroying your health. It's there. The food colorings, hydrogenated vegetable oil. There's one you want to look out for. Check the ingredients list. If it doesn't sound like something you have in your kitchen, you might not want to get it, right? Or make things from scratch. That would be one of the best ideas. Um, I have a little bit of a, of a reveal, I guess. There is a, I was interviewed by the Royal Gazette and there will be an article coming out soon in this month about diet products and low fat products and whether or not they're healthy for us. So look out for that in the Royal Gazette. I think it's in the special feature in the best health it is in the best health special feature. So look out for that. It will also be online. I will be sharing that with my community as well. So you can read through that for all the details. So those are the questions that came in prior to the event. I'm going to turn off the recording so that we can um, answer the rest of the questions. And again, if you're at home watching this, send me your questions till December 15th. I'm gonna set that to December 15th, send me your questions. I almost ended the meeting. Stop recording.